Trains are on the move in Aurora, stopping at the Nine Mile Station now, but soon they will be running throughout our entire city. Power distribution lines are going up, tracks are in place, it's a busy time. Once completed, our Aurora line will be watched closely by some very trained eyes. So this is the air traffic control for light rail trains. Behind this door is the team responsible for keeping the entire light rail system on schedule and safe. It's uh, Central Command Center. We run all the light rail trains out of here. At least two controllers oversee the entire system around the clock oftentimes more. Every one of the numbers you see behind us represents a train that's out and functioning right now. This giant wall of screens shows every route with real-time updates. So when we have a green train that's on time, uh, anything less than five minutes delay, it's yellow, and if it goes orange, uh, it's over five minutes. It's all very high-tech. Trains are communicating to the track the tracks relaying that information to our mainframe here and it's showing where the trains are and which way they're moving. If a train breaks down, crews here quickly send help because one stoppage can impact the entire line. A minute or two of delay for us backs up the whole system by about five to seven minutes and it keeps growing from that nature. So we like to get things moving safely, get the problem corrected and get our trains moving again. As passenger demand increases, so does the number of train cars. During a Broncos game, we have 48 extra train cars out there interface with our regular service. More rail cars mean more people getting home faster. We're able to clear the stadium and clear those type of situations in about an hour and five minutes from the end of the game. And that is in respect to these people that are the professionals up here running the control center and our operators as well. Train 13, you're clear to make that call. Have a good day out there. See that open space? They are ready for our Aurora line. It will continue out straight across and into those blank screens. So it will come out and it'll loop through the city uh, in the blank screens there. We're excited about getting that part of the alignment open up. It's a big expansion and an exciting time for RTD right now. And by the looks of this, we better get ready. Our train is about to arrive. For Aurora News Weekly, I'm Jenny Castor. We're all very excited and you can really feel the energy here. The first step of this process was to pick it up and put it on the truck from where we've been building it in the uh, ILF off-ramp area. The closure started at Parker Road because we knew we were going to need the truck to back up the ILF off-ramp and then come back drive down the northbound lanes just like regular traffic, but he had the highway all to himself to get here, to get into position. So far, so good. It's really kind of unusual to see the highway with no cars on it. Then they're gonna pick it up, swing it, and put it into place. We don't wanna do this kind of work with live traffic underneath us and to get the crane into the position that it needs to be in. We really have a lot of people involved with tonight's process. This is a big deal and it's an inconvenience to all those people on the highway, but hopefully they'll understand when they see this in the morning. This is another great milestone towards the completion of the I-225 rail line. A collaborative effort, it all came together. We had an audience here, the community came out to watch. They're excited to see this happen. That's gonna help passengers get from the east side of I-225 at the Florida station over to the west side of the highway. <laughs> The bridge is actually, it's 14 feet wide, 192 feet long, and it weighs, once it's complete with the bridge deck poured and the plexiglass and the arches, it will be just about 600,000 pounds. So this is a great night for the I-225 rail project, the Aurora Line. This is really going to show progress for the community. You can see tracks everywhere. We're really moving and we're going to be ready to go at the end of 2016. Yeah, and we got the bridge up, not a problem at all, and it's, it looks great. Hello everyone, I'm Lane Lyon. And I'm Wendy Brockman. Thanks for joining us. All right, bridge construction check, mm -hmm. design work, 
Check. Extensive rail work. Check. I think I can hear the commuters rejoicing <laughs> right now. This is the big year for our light rail line. Aurora TV producer Jenny Castor shows us what's new and what's next. <laughs> So much has happened in the past 12 months. Now get ready to be wowed by an epic 2016. Our city's landscape is evolving daily into the new R Line, or what we call the Aurora Line. Be on the lookout for some impressive progress in places like this. Exposition between Abilene and Sable will continue to bring an urban feel to the heart of Aurora. So the train will be coming down the center of exposition here along the track. There will be one lane open on each side of Exposition, uh, eastbound and westbound, for cars to drive. And there will also be a fence uh, through the middle of the track to help keep pedestrians safe. Coming up, we'll be installing more of these OCS poles you can see behind us. The overhead contact system poles will support the wires that power the trains. Watch for them going up all across town. Further north along the Aurora Line. We're standing out here at the Ellsworth and Sable intersection. This entire intersection has been rebuilt. You'll notice new sidewalks and soon a new traffic light to help guide cars, pedestrians, and later this year, trains. When the final alignment opens on Ellsworth here, there will be one lane in each direction and then the train will run down the center of the roadway. Near the 13th Avenue station, the train will actually cross under I-225. That's where one of the most unique and strategically placed features is located. It's kind of a hidden and fun little area. There's a structure called the bathtub. Yes, it's called the bathtub. It's a concrete floor and then two walls that keep the track on the inside and then the water is all stays on the outside. If there were ever to be a hundred year flood, it will keep the water out from the North Tollgate Creek just behind the bathtub. Next up, our signature Colfax station. So we installed the Colfax arches on the Colfax bridge earlier in the fall and now we're just continuing to work on the bridge. There's a lot of finishing touches to be put on. They're installing the elevators upcoming in this year. Uh, working on the steps, you'll be able to access the station from both sides of Colfax. The entire area and its numerous projects have been a focal point for months. Just uh, redeveloping the whole neighborhood here uh, and all of these projects will be wrapping up in 2016. Right now the crews are working to flood the tracks with ballast which is the rock that surrounds the track. Their goal is to get all the ballast in place so that they can pave over this track here and open this intersection. Just north of the Peoria and 30th Avenue intersection is where the Aurora line will end. It'll give commuters the option to connect with the University of Colorado A-Line that can take them to DIA or Union Station. It's a very exciting time in Aurora. The trains will be coming soon. Testing is going to begin soon. Construction is wrapping up. And if there's one message that we remember as we welcome in 2016, it's that these signs and road markings are so very important. They're up now and more are on the way giving us plenty of time to learn the new traffic patterns and crossings to be fully prepared for our Aurora line to come home. It's going to be a busy year. Everything's coming together and the finished product will be a really cool sight to see. For Aurora News Weekly, I'm Jenny Castor. Uh, we can hardly wait. So the bathtub is not for bathing, it's for flood control. I got I gathered that from that story. <laughs> Don't be confused. <laughs> there is a lot to learn and a lot still happening, and that is why we brought in an expert today, Macy Wingerter from uh, Kiewit Construction, joining us on the news desk. Thank you for being here today. Of course, great to be here. It feels like 2015 was the year of seeing a lot of this come together, mm -hmm. and you can't help but notice if you drive down 225 just how much has changed in the last year. What can we expect here in the months ahead? It's a really exciting time. Um, impacts to the public and the driving traffic is starting to minimize and we're really focusing on the work within the guideway so that we can start testing trains this year and um, see trains running along the line. The guideway is kind of that section where the track and the overhead lines. Yeah, it's everything between the two walls on the outside of the track. So there's the OCS poles, the wires, the track, everything inside of there.